So in my last video, I got the ESP8266 battery powered and automatically flashing an LED. So I'm going to see if I can get it to present a little web app and via Wi-Fi, I'm going to access that web app to turn an LED on and off. So let's get started. Get the laptop out. And let's go to the robot cupboard. We can get the 8266 and the other parts we're needing today. Here is the 8266 assembled on a board battery box. At this point we're going to go straight for making a mini web server. So let's see how we do that. No power and no LED flashing. We've got a problem there. Ah uh, look that's an awful mistake. I've connected that backwards which was exactly what I wanted to avoid with it. After saying I'd connect ground on the black pin and then making it on another pin I might have actually damaged something here. Hopefully nothing major. Flashing light means it's all still okay. Whew, right, that was a worrying moment. It's an easy mistake to make uh, when connecting things like this, that there's no real polarity on the connector, so you do have to just watch the colours of these leads. Let's get in there and add some code to do things from a web server running on Wi-Fi. So my first problem is pairing it up. I want to find my SSID in a list of the local Wi-Fi access points. I did this earlier in AT mode. Presumably, when I flashed the firmware, it would have forgotten all the original settings, so now I want to do this with Lua. The first thing I'll do is take a quick look at the API docs for the Node MCU system. An API document lists the commands you can call, and it looks here like Wi-Fi.sta is the Wi-Fi station. Looking at this wiki page here, the first thing I'll need to do is to put it into Wi-Fi station mode. I had to do something similar with the AT setup. So let's copy this and we'll throw it in here and we're in station mode. So how do we list things? I'm thinking that get AP, get access points, would be the right thing. There aren't any other API calls that look quite right. Let's take a closer look at get AP. It says scan and get AP list as a Lua table into a callback function. So I'd need to write code to implement a callback to print the details, or I could use this handy sample code that is provided right here. This just prints the list and is exactly what I want to do. So let's paste that into my editor. Here is the callback to find. It will take a parameter t for table, then loop through the data and print the table keys and values. So let's go and upload this code with ESP file write list ap dot lua. Do file list ap.lua and hooray! There we are. So we've got a full list of all the Wi Fi stations here. So I'll put my SSID and password into this configuration file, which I'll also set up as the init file for the device. And I'll get this to flash an LED so I know it's all initialized and connected. I'll grab this LED blink code and put this below the Wi Fi initialization. Then I'll add a line to print the IP of the device. I need to find that in the API document. Wi-Fi.sta.getIP looks right. The example suggests we can just print this. Let's put that in my code. I'll save this as connect and blink dot Lua. I'll send it to the device with ESP file write connect and blink Lua. And for the device, this will be init.lua. Now when we reset the ESP, it'll blink the LED and it'll be connected to my local network. OK, let's reset it. It's a little bit faint here. You might just about see the blue lights as the uh, Wi-Fi initialising. You can also see the LED flashing away. So it's all set up and good to go. Here's a quick plan for a web app to control an LED from our phone or computer. I'll serve a simple HTML file to the client. The HTML file will use JS, JavaScript, a method of running code on the phone or a computer. There are radio buttons down here to turn it on and off. Only one of those can be selected. So the code up here registers an event, something that will happen when those buttons are clicked. Let me just fix this indenting here. So both these events call power when clicked which just goes and sets some text to show its state in the browser. I'll need to change this to send the new state when it's clicked to the ESP8266. So there's a simple HTML server based on example code here, and I've penned in empty functions to serve the HTML file 
and to turn the LED on or off. So now I need to get the information from the client out of this payload. I can then use the path from that to route it to these two functions, to toggle the LED and to serve the HTML page. I've put a print here to show me on serial what the data packet, the payload, looks like. So just running this should give me what I need. OK, I'll save this as LED server and now upload it to the ESP. So I'll try running this with serial connected in a browser. Hello. OK, let's bring the URL bar into shot and we'll try slash on and slash off. I'll ignore the favicon stuff. This is for favorite page icons, a bit like this one up here. So we have some strings, bits of text that we can match, like slash off, slash on, and just get slash. I'll try putting the first one here. If string.findPayload slash on, then set LED1. Else if string.findPayload slash off, then set LED0. Else if string dot find payload and I'll go get that specific string from serial for this got it paste that in then serve HTML otherwise this is anything we don't recognize so let's print the payload right setting the LED I'll go get a copy of my LED config from here I'll pop that in and then I'll initialize the pin mode but I'll only do it once before starting the server. Now to actually turn it on, let's put gpio.write in set LED and pass it the value parameter. I'll change the passed in values to gpio.low and gpio.high. Let's make sure that we send a response with con.send to the browser for all these operations so it doesn't just wait forever. The next bit is to do serve HTML. I'll give it con the connection to send stuff back on file.open to open the file. Here's the reference for it. The file we're opening is powerled.html. We can then do con colon send file.read to send the data back to the client. And then importantly, let's make sure I close the file. Now, I'm not sure if that if syntax is right for Lua, so I'll have to try that and see. Let's upload both our files, ESP file write LED server dot Lua and ESP file write power LED dot HTML. I've noticed that this LED is still blinking. I'll quickly remove the LED code from my init script and upload it again. Let's open up putty again and then use do file LED server dot Lua to run my server. Hmm. Unexpected symbol error on line 34. Uh, we need to find that and fix that. So my problem is that this else if, there's a space there, and that space means that it needs multiple end statements, not what I meant. So I need to take away the spaces to make it an else if, and this should work. Now trying the fixed version. Do file, LED server dot Lua, and, well, Something is running. Maybe my server is running. Let's try and load the page. And here it is, LED power. Click off and on. Hmm, nothing happening with the server. Why is that? The first problem here was that jQuery script tag. Uh, I'd not closed it properly. Whoops. Let's upload that and try again. It's loading the file each time, so I don't need to restart the server, only refresh the browser. There you go, there's my new code. Okay, I'm going to show what happens with the LED server. So let's start the server and reload the browser. So let's click the on button. We have on, we have code here showing it's actually picked up. Get there, I don't see all the other gets. Where was the get on? Oh, because I'm only printing the payload if it doesn't recognise it. OK. Let's do the off, do the on. Ah, now, that's frustrating. There was a slight problem in that my code was actually not returning anything at all. And jQuery doesn't like that much, nor will the browser. So I'm making sure that I don't send an empty response. I send a response with an on or an off in it.
So if I now switch to my browser, so there's not much output when it's actually getting the right response. It's always asking for this favorite icon. Uh, if I click on, see the LED turn on, off, on, off. I've got a nice touch screen here so I can touch screen on and off. I'll try this out on my phone, but it looks like it's going to work. The last thing to do is to detach all of this stuff that powers it, power it from batteries and try it with my phone. The only tricky thing is my phone is currently the camera. A bit of a moment of truth here. Let's disconnect the serial and we can take that away. Let's connect the battery up, which is over here. And this to the ground, I've got ground on positive, and we are now totally wireless. Okay, let's see if we can get a phone to do this. John, do you think you can use that phone to control the light there? Yeah. Right. See this light here, this green light? Press this button here. Thanks. Click there, yeah. Go on. And click there, yeah. There we are. You have to, oh, <laughs> you haven't quite got the touch screen mastered, have you? And I might need to make those buttons big and mobile friendly. These two buttons, on and off. Yes, works. It's a success, I think.